Hello, Whidbey Ben here with another weekend project. This is a Suncast Aqua Winder hose reel. This uses water power to wind up our garden hoses, and these are really nice when they work. We have a couple around the house, but we've noticed that we usually get about two seasons out of them, and then they seem to quit working. Rather than tossing this out in the trash heap this year, I thought I'd try taking this thing apart and see if it's possible to rebuild the hydraulic motor that runs this thing to restore some of the performance. So that will be today's project. We're gonna start by removing the hose and then we're gonna disconnect it from the water intake input and also remove the water discharge hose. We'll clean it up a little bit and then we'll bring it inside and see what we can do with it. On the back side, there's a little cover here. Just snap that off of there and inside is something that holds the hub in place just take a Phillips screwdriver and remove that and this little hub retainer here that should allow us to remove the motor once we flip this thing over. Okay, let's start taking this beast apart. First thing we need to do is loosen up this hose clamp and um, remove the discharge hose. Now we have three screws holding this cover. One here, one here, and one here. So we get all three of those off. Cover comes off. Now we need to remove this handle here. There's a little clip here that holds this in place. You just pinch that and you should be able to lift this right up. These little prongs right here hold that in place there. Now there's a retaining ring down here that's held in place by three screws. One, two, three. So we'll undo those. When you're dealing with the retention ring for the hub, which is uh, this flanged structure here, it's held in place by three screws and you might find that the screws are hard to get to, but if you grab the reel and rotate it, you can move the hub into whatever position you need so you can either insert or remove the screws. So you just grab the hose reel on, on the inside and rotate it and you can be the position of those screws because if one of those screw positions is under one of the hose entries it'll be hard to get to so it's easy enough to fix okay with those undone we can pull the valve assembly out of the hub here here we go so this will need to be cleaned and lubricated. Okay, let's start by rebuilding the valve assembly. One thing to note, when removing the hose clamp for the water discharge hose, a one quarter inch nut driver works a lot better than a screwdriver for uh, loosening and tightening up this clamp. Okay, first step, we need to remove the, the handle that operates this valve here. And to do that, there are two little um, prongs here that hold this in place. If you pinch those in the pair of pliers, you can then lift this up to take it off. So here's those two little prongs. Now to help with reassembly, 
we're going to mark the orientation of this shaft here with a little sharpie marker here so we can make sure that it's lined up properly when we put the core back into the valve. <clears throat> we can start by removing the water intake and the discharge hoses. These are held in place by little flexible C-clips, but be very careful because these will tend to shoot across the room if you're not careful about how you remove those. <clears throat> then we just simply pull that off. You'll see there's an O-ring sealing uh, the inside of this. Same thing here. So C-clip comes off. Discharge hose comes off. Another O-ring in here that will service both of those. Now, <clears throat> the center of this valve assembly is held in place by a little C-clip here. So you just spread that. Well, actually, let me reorient this thing here. There are two ridges here that align the valve handle and they won't let you spring the C-clip off right there. So I'm just gonna spin it around put my finger up here to catch the C-clip and spread it with my thumbnails here. There it goes. So there's that little C-clip there. It fits in a groove right under here. And now we're going to push this center assembly out through the valve body. Oh, this is the retaining ring that uh, uh, keeps this assembly in the hub. <clears throat> this can be simply slid off as well. Um, a hint for later on when you're trying to assemble or disassemble this thing, sometimes the screw holes will be covered up by, um, by these uh, inlet arms here, but you can remedy that simply by rotating the hub so that the screw holes will be wherever you need them to be. If the valve body is still in the uh, aqua winder, you reach inside the case and just grab the hub and because these are attached to the hub, it will rotate freely like this around these intake tubes. So that's how you can access those holes no matter where they're at. But I'm just gonna take that off for now since we don't need that right now. And that fit in this little groove here. Just like that. Okay, now to push this out, you try pushing like that, but I'm just gonna push it against the tabletop. There it goes. <clears throat> so now you can start to see some of the O-rings inside of this thing here. Let's see if we can Pull this thing out. Uh, it takes quite a bit of force to get that thing out. There we go. So what we've got here, we've got two O-rings that are inside some uh, recessed beds here. And we've got an O-ring on the end and two O-rings here on this end here. Uh, <clears throat> what we wanna do now is make sure that we've got everything nice and clean you want to inspect all the O-rings to make sure there's no um, broken O-rings or heavily scored O-rings. Those could be sources for leakage of hydraulic pressure and de diminished performance. Um, <clears throat> the other thing you want to check for is any scoring inside of the, the valve assembly. You can just feel that with your finger. And also you wanna make sure this is nice and clean so that there's no contaminants that could interfere with the performance of this. You also wanna check these seals to make sure they're all intact and not cracked. Um, you also wanna look through each one of these to make sure that there's no obstructions uh, that could be interfering with the function. And on this end, you also wanna make sure there's no scoring or cracking of the valve body here as well. Once you've got everything cleaned, <clears throat> which I've already done with this unit here, um, we'll reassemble it by simply reversing the disassembly process. 
This is what I've been using on all of the gaskets. This is a plumber's grease for faucets and valves. This is approved specifically for use with O-rings and it's a waterproof uh, 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 type of grease. We'll start by lubricating these O-rings here since they are the first ones to interface with the valve body. We'll put some grease on these ones as well. Well, we'll grease up anything that's made out of rubber, basically. We'll want to apply some grease to the inside here, as well as to the inside of this. That's a much smaller dam or something I have to use my little finger to get in there. Okay. So we insert the narrow end first. And then we come to this first O-ring here. I'm gonna set this one aside for right now. This first O-ring, you wanna press it flat so it's in its groove. And it's probably a good idea when we insert these, o these big O-rings to try not to have them lined up with these holes because they might bind in those holes. So I'm gonna rotate this. So there's now holes here for it to bind on, and we're gonna insert that. Might have to use a thumbnail to kind of hold this end of the O-ring down here as you push it through. You wanna make sure that the, that O-ring hasn't caught on the lip of anything. Also, you wanna look down into these holes here to make sure that the far O-ring on the narrow part of the shaft don't bind on the inside of these holes too. So I'm gonna advance this. Now we're not quite to that point yet. Okay, we're ready for this O-ring now. So we'll put this one in its groove there. A little more plumber's grease on there. And we're gonna advance this one in. I see this O-ring here is coming into that hole there, so I'm gonna rotate this a little bit, just keep it away from it. All right, so we're clear on that. Advance that in. Now when I get to this point here, if you look down into the hole here, you might be able to see that the far O-ring and the very first O-ring on the narrow part of the body, we have to watch carefully and make sure that doesn't bind as well as the this end of this o-ring too so get this one in first all right so i've got that o-ring in nice and safely and i'm looking down this hole here i can see the other the small the o-ring on the narrow part is working its way past this hole as well But I can see that as I push it a little bit further, it wants to bind in that hole. So I'm gonna find something to push that down, make sure it stays seated. And what I've found works is a uh, bamboo skewer. It's nice and thin, it's long. I can stick it all the way down this hole here and push on that O-ring just to keep it seated in its groove as I push this further. So now I've got that O-ring past the opening there, so it's not pinched and should seal properly. 
And we're down to this final O-ring here. Give it a little shove there. So I can look down both of these, not see any, ba any binding on um, the far O-rings as well. Now we can see that our marks here are off by 180 degrees because we uh, took those O-rings, uh, the, the round O-rings and put them on this part of the valve assembly so they wouldn't bind on the holes here while we're trying to get them in. So we're gonna need to rotate this valve body around to line those uh, marks that we made. To do that, I'm gonna use some channel lock pliers, adjust it so that I can very gently grab the valve body here. Don't want to damage that. And we're going to rotate that around until we get our lines marked up. You can see the O-ring coming into view here in this hole there. So now that is open. And there's our marks. lined up. This should allow us to snap this back on. Now before we do that, take this C-ring here and we'll snap the valve body back in place here. We're going to secure that. That will keep that from coming back out. Now we can test fit the handle here. There it goes. So now our handle's back in position. We can work this back and forth. You can see the O-ring moving, opening that valve, closing that valve. That's closed, that's open. And we have nice smooth operation of that. <clears throat> Clean these off here and then we'll re-lubricate them. Now we're going to put our intake tube back on. There's a little uh, ridge here that uh, there's a stop here that won't let you push this in too far. Stick the C-clip uh, back into its grooves. Hopefully it won't shoot across the room when I try to do this. Goes. Same thing with the outlet tube. Push it into the stops. Use the C clip to put that back in place. There we go. Then our retainer flange goes back on there. And this is now basically rebuilt and ready to be reinserted into the hub. By far the hardest part of servicing this hose rail is taking the side plate off. The side plate is held by snaps here, 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 here. There's a snap here, a snap here, a snap here, a snap here, 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 and here. It's best to start at the bottom and work your way up towards the top and it will just feel like you're breaking the thing. Same 
little more clip up here. Now we got to work on these top clips here. So finish this side. This side came loose again. So again, we've got the clip here, clip here, clip there, and we've got clip holes here, 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 and here, 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 and here. Oh, and you take this piece off, keep an eye out for this bearing here, don't lose that. This gives us access to the um, spooling mechanism here and the motor here. So we're gonna go ahead and take the motor out. Look underneath here, you can see that there's a sprocket here that's driven by the motor. That interfaces with this uh, gear set around here. Put that bearing back in there. And so I'll also make a note that there's a bearing here as well. All right, to take the motor out of the housing, there are four screws, one, two, three, four, and these just have to come out. These are Phillips. There's a bushing. Here that we'll go ahead and take that off and then just give that a little wiggle and out comes your three-cylinder hydraulic motor that powers this thing. This uh, braces the camshaft against the housing there but you can see how the cylinders rotate there. The motor disassembly you have watched is a sanitized version. When I first pulled the motor out, this is what I found. There was a decomposing adult slug wedged between the first cylinder and the wall of the motor housing. This was probably stopping the piston from being able to move. Okay, let's take this motor apart here. This piece just snaps off the bottom. There's a couple of ridges on here that it snaps onto. So that just comes off. This similarly just snaps off of the camshaft. And then each of these pistons is just clipped onto the crankshaft here. So you just have to put a little bit of force on them to Spread them. There we go. It'll pop off like that. Within each cylinder, there's a piston that has a hydraulic seal. So the inside of the cylinder needs to be cleaned. All the seals need to be cleaned and then relubricated. And then we'll reassemble this. The other cylinders and pistons all come off the same way. Just just like that. Okay, now comes the tricky bit getting it all put back together again. <clears throat> This shows the pistons here, or the cylinders. These have all been cleaned. This is the piston that fits inside the cylinder. There's a seal here. 
and take some plumber's grease. This is especially made for plumbing fittings, including uh, O-rings. I'm going to apply a generous bit around here. And also a little bit around the inside of the cylinder here. And we have to be careful not to damage the seal as we insert it into the cylinder here. So I give it a little bit of a twist. And make sure that the edges don't get caught and flipped upside down. All right, so that's one piston in there. This piston here, I'll pull this one out. This one's been cleaned, but I'm gonna grease this up just like the other one. There's also some seals down here. Might as well leave those up as well. Now there is a spacer clip that goes between these pistons right here. We'll just clip that on. There's two little notches here. Looks like it lines up with these notches here. And yep, it clicks right in there. All right, now got one more piston to lube up here. Oh. We need to have the pistons all lined up. These little clips here, you just rotate them so that they're parallel to the shaft. And here's our drive shaft here, our crank shaft. This looks like it can probably use a little bit of lubricant here on the end. It fits inside here. a little bit of lubricant around here. Okay. And this piston just snaps right onto there. Just like that. for the other two. There's our three pistons firing nice and smoothly. Now this little piece here just braces the crankshaft against the housing, so I'll put a little grease on that. Basically fits like this. And that's basically ready to go back inside the housing. Oh, gotta snap the C-ring on here to keep this assembly from slipping off. There we go. Just an assembly complete. Okay, we're gonna put the motor back inside the housing here. So when we do this, there is a hole on the bottom here with a little um, a socket on the other side that you'll have to align in order to get the uh, motor all the way in. So let's go ahead and just drop this in. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of lube around this first. Okay, so that's gone in. Wiggle this around a little bit. There's that little sprocket there. 
So now we're engaged with that little sprocket. Okay, we're gonna put this back together. <clears throat> we have this bearing that fits over the top with the shoulder up against the spool. Now we just need to make sure that this little pinion interfaces with <clears throat> this gear set here and that the outside, outside this meshes with this little gear here. Just need a little bit of a wiggle. Looks like that's all set. I'm going to put the top piece back on. Then we have this little bearing here. I'll lubricate that with just a little bit of grease. And this interfaces with the spool, the line leader, the hose leader. We need to line up these top pieces first, snap them into the top. Then we're going to line up the spool in the center, and then make sure we line up the threader here. Make sure the threader's hooked up properly, and then just snap it all back together. I almost forgot on the back side. There's a spool retainer here. Need to line up the little prongs on here with the grooves. It looks like there's a little bit of grease in there, so we'll put a little more grease in there. We can install the valve. These have all been lubricated. Just be careful not to uh, damage the seals as you put that in. Line up the little retainer ring with the holes. screws that works okay we attach our drain hose here hose clamp to go outside, put, put the hose back on it, hook it up to water and see how it works. Okay, we've got this thing hooked back up to water, to the discharge hose and to 125 feet of commercial duty hose. Let's see how well she works after the rebuild. Well, that looks to be a good sign that it's actually working. We didn't screw it totally up. Well, that's 125 feet there. I wouldn't say it works as good as new, but it certainly works a lot better than it did before we did the rebuild. 
So this may have been a worthwhile weekend project after all. It looks like even though it's not working perfectly, it's working good enough to save it from the garbage heap, at least for another season. Well, viewers, it looks like we saved this Suncast Aquawind hose reel from the garbage heap, at least for another year, by doing a take apart and rebuild. If you'd like to take on this project yourself, let me go through all the tools that I used. First of all, I needed a small flat-headed screwdriver to pry, pry off the cap on the end here and also to <clears throat> pry off some of the C-rings and C-clamps. That was very helpful. I needed a, a, a three-point Phillips screwdriver to do the, undo the screw on the hub retainer here. We used a number one Phillips screwdriver on the three screws covering the valve uh, cover, as well as the three screws holding the uh, retainer clip on the valve side. We used a um, needle nose pliers to help get the handle off of the valve assembly. Um, I did use a one quarter inch nut driver to loosen the hose clamp on the discharge hose. This works a lot better than the screwdriver that you saw me struggling with earlier in the video. Um, we used a waterproof plumber's grease. Um, this is for faucets and valves and it's um, specifically approved for use with O-rings. You don't want to use something that will cause deterioration of the O-rings. Um, <clears throat> we did use a Sharpie marker to mark the alignment of the valve stem within the valve body. Let's see. In order to get the motor out, I had to resort to using a pry bar, um, a sturdy putty knife to be able to get the pry bar into the areas where the clips are holding it together, and a small hammer to apply the force necessary to separate those clips from their holds. Uh, we also used a channel lock to rotate the valve stem within the valve body and a bamboo skewer to make sure that our O-rings were seated properly inside the valve body as we are reassembling it. So that's basically all the tools that were needed. If you found this video entertaining, useful, educational, please subscribe to my channel. Until our next project, bye-bye.